Fallen Order, Outer Worlds, Control, all great games. All very short games, all things considered. What are y'all doing between those games, though? Do you play Apex or Destiny with your buds, or are you like me, a person without friends? I mean, you know, an explorer, rooting around in the darkest depths of Steam for rare treasures, for undiscovered games that make me feel special because I'm like the only one that knows about them. Here's the problem with that though. Being a real deal hipster ass gamer is a lonely road, brother. You come to find yourself trying to explain a weird PC game that you like to your friends at work and they're all like, uh, that sounds weird. Is that even a real game? So what are you playing, Destiny? Imagine my surprise. Say, you ever play Lisa? It's this game where you play this guy like bald, you got a poncho, you gotta save your daughter, but it's not really your daughter. She's, you like found her and then she gets kidnapped again and then they're like, oh, you gotta chop her we're gonna kill Terry. And you're like, no, don't do that. That's not you. real. Chop off her arm. I'm Eat a shit, Dustin. Why is everybody gotta be so basic all the time with their Star War and their Starbuck and their Aquamans? 2019 is over, so it's probably too late for them to be cool now, but, but it's not too late for us though, buddy. Come along with me, and let's talk about some of the best, most underrated weirdo games of the decade that hardly anyone has played. Number one, Lisa the Painful RPG. Lisa is a game where you play as a balding drug addict in a post-apocalyptic world in which very few women are left alive. You're basically Liam Neeson and Taken, except sucky, trying to hunt down your missing daughter that has presumably been kidnapped by cannibal warlords. Along the way, you gather up a crew of depressed and or insane degenerate freaks, and they help you piss off your enemies and make them cry so you can steal their dirty magazines. You know, totally normal stuff. Gameplay is a satisfying mix of side scroll and RPG, and you have to be super careful about how you manage your battles, as you and your team are susceptible to kidnappings, permanent fatal attacks, and general ennui at every turn. Along the way, you may be invited to chop your own goddamn arms off to save your party members from being permanently killed, force them to play Russian roulette for cash prizes, or to treat your body like a science experiment by taking a drug called Joy. It's like being at a rave, except everyone is sad and it ends like the one in the first Blade movie. What's wrong, baby? Side note, the soundtrack for this game freaking rules. You like that? Number two, West of Loathing. This stick figure Western RPG is the best Western themed video game I've played since Red Dead Redemption, the one. Found. Son of a bitch. In this beautifully rendered masterpiece, you play as a cowboy, girl, man, whatever, who punches hell cows, duels rodeo clowns, digs around in spittoons, engages in ghost bureaucracy, and befriends a goblin or two, probably. This game is hella funny, even if you're the type of person who doesn't often find video game humor all that much of a riot. Daddy, get the Oh, brother! Nice try, Borderlands. Still love you, though. I left my ass off playing this game, which, on top of the fact that it's a legit RPG that is chock full of secrets and multiple ways to solve problems, makes this a title that I just can't recommend enough. Number three, Super Daryl Deluxe. Super Daryl Deluxe is the answer to the question that we're all thinking but we're afraid to ask. Why has nobody made a psychedelic Metroidvania version of Napoleon Dynamite, huh? You play as, and you never gonna believe this, Daryl. He's a new kid at some kind of effed up multi-dimensional high school. You travel through time and space, unlocking and upgrading dozens of new abilities and items to let you do all kinds of crazy stuff like teleporting, summoning meteors, surfing on sharks, and a few dozen other crazy things. The real hook in this thing though, is how it looks. The art is incredibly trippy and unlike any of the usually throwback 16-bit stylings of other similar titles. If you're looking for a Castlevania-like that doesn't have the same aesthetic as Hollow Knight, Shovel Knight, Owl Boy, Monster Boy, Boy Knight, Nighty Knight, and Boy Boy, Super Daryl Deluxe is your jam. Number four, Drop C. Now at first glance, you're probably thinking, what in God's green hell is this homicidal murder clown game doing in your list, Jeremy? Well, dig this, brother. Dropsy is a game about squashing your preconceived notions about John Wayne Gacy-ass looking clowns. Dropsy, despite appearances, is a misunderstood and lovable scamp who just wants to embrace the world in his gentle, presumably damp, noodly arms. This is a traditional point-and-click adventure game, but one where everything is communicated visually, so that means no text, no voice acting, all art and animation. You're just a little juggalo trying to talk to some animals, help your neighbors out, make some friends, and convince everybody that you're not a pyromaniac parasite by unlocking the mysteries of the dark carnival. Whoop whoop! F***ing Magnus! How do they work? I gotta level with you. I'm not usually a point and click sort of guy, but in this case, the puzzles, characters, animations, and art are so consistently good, I can't for the life of me imagine why this game is not revered like any of the LucasArts classics of old. Number five, Disco Elysium. Now, this is a recent release, but one that I would be remiss not to mention here. It's probably pretty likely that this one might be beneath quite a few people's radar, but it really shouldn't be. 
Disco Elysium is hard to categorize. It's like a CRPG where you're trying to solve a murder while also piecing together who you are, all the while wrestling with your own inner psyche, an obvious drug addiction, and a massive existential crisis. Also, there's virtually no combat in this game, at least not that I've seen, but though I did punch a 12 year old in the face once. In the game. In the game. It's not at all like anything I've played before, except maybe Hotel Dusk, if you remember that one. It's beautiful, it's overwritten, it's surprising, pretentious, and immensely rewarding if you stick with it and really commit to developing your character and rolling with your failures as much as your successes. It also helps to just go ahead and treat yourself to a little speed every now and again. You've earned it. In the game, I mean, not like in real life. Don't, don't, don't do drugs. Hard drugs, anyways. So there you have it, folks. Those are my five underrated weirdo games for degenerate PC gamers, but there's a ton more great stuff out there that I didn't even get to mention. What are some of your favorite unusual games that your friends haven't played and kind of suspect that you made up that one time you went on a spiritual retreat in Joshua Tree? Let me know in the comments below, and for all things weird, keep a lock to IGN. I'm your pal Jeremy. I'll see you in hell.